Hey everyone, my name is Heather Havenwood and welcome to another version of Like a Boss where I get to interview influencers and experts and badasses like you, which I'm super excited about to be interviewing today, Elliot Robertson. What's really cool about this conversation is we're going to be talking about happiness. Yes, just in case you're not happy today, listen up, tune it up, here we go because I know sometimes I have bad days and I don't want to be happy, seriously, but it really is a key to success, happiness and tapping into that energy and tapping into that piece of you that feels happy no matter what, it's what I call the all is good scenario. So today I actually have an expert on the line where he is an happiness expert. Don't you always wonder, remember when you were in high school, at least for me, I had the person in the, the room or the classroom was always happy. And in my world, they were the most annoying person in the planet. <laughs> And now as I'm older, I'm like, oh my God, I really want to be their friend. But you know, when I was in high school, like, God, something's wrong with them to be happy. Um, but honestly, I think that's really awesome when people say, I am a happiness coach. Like truly, that actually is truly a career because we go through life and shit happens. I can say that to my podcast, shit happens. But how do you actually stay in a presence? How do you stay in a presence to actually feel happy so that you can actually move the situation in a better way. So I'm gonna be bringing on the expert because I'm definitely not an expert at that at all. Here we are, Elliot Robertson, thank you for the show. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks, 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 thanks. All right, let me explain to you who Elliot Robertson is. Okay, he is a love and joy coach, an author and certified happiness workshop leader. Elliot is the author of Say Yes to Life, Seven Keys to Fulfilling living full out from within, and he has written devotionals for Daily Word Magazine, as well as articles for Science of Mind and Wisdom Magazine. He holds a master's degree in psychology. Welcome, 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 Elliot. Thank you. Initially, you were telling everyone that I'm a happiness coach, and that is my former title, and I am right now transitioning to a love and joy coach. Oh, got so. it. Okay, got it. So you're transitioning <laughs> so from happy to joy and love. It's the, sort of the same thing. I just decided that joy and love would be a little bit deeper and more meaningful. So. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. That's great. No more than no worries. So everyone, he is a joy and love coach as well, as top of that. So let me ask you a question. Were you that kid in high school that was always happy? I was miserable in my teenage years and in my youth. Okay, um, you're welcome love. to me because seriously, that was me in high school. I was a freaking, I was a depressive kid, man. So tell me about that. How did you go from that to this now? Well, um, when I was a youngster in New York, I was really jealous of everyone who was um, like at cafes and stuff with their friends. I didn't really have any friends. I didn't have enough money to pay for the cafes and stuff. So I would walk around New York City and I'd be jealous all the time. And um, now I just am really bitter free. I had a lot of bitterness and jealousy back then. And now I'm bitter free. How did I get there? One of the things that is a key for me, has been a key for me is, um, first of all, just noticing my unique qualities and appreciating them. That's one of the keys. And also really being attentive to my intuition and to the mm -hmm. guidance I'm getting from the universe, taking it seriously and following it. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, that makes that does make a big difference. But let me ask you a question because I think that, and I'm going to play devil's advocate for just a minute, all right? Because stuff happens to us, right? Things happen to us in life. I mean, I personally just had surgery. I've been sitting on my back for nine days, and you know, it's been challenging because sitting there and I'm in pain, uh, dealing with that, and it's like, oh, I'm happy. You know, that's hard to like get to that uh, feeling. How do you work with people? You know, how, what is it that, I mean, are you, so first of all, I understand you have a master's in psychology. Is it therapy or is it something else? Can you kind of put a light mm -hmm. on that for somebody? Yeah, I never really became a psychologist or anything or did any counseling. Okay. And I really make a big distinction between psychology and what I do. My uh, coaching is really based mostly on spirituality. Um, but anyway, you were saying that you've had a really crappy last few days yeah. uh, on your back. And so my first uh, uh, help for tip for you, my first counseling for you would just be to feel all of your feelings and to just go for it 100%. Feel the sadness or the pain or the anger or the frustration. Whatever arises, feel it full out and totally. Mm. And then now, be able to move it to the next phase like what after you do that how do you move it okay well um 
you were saying something in your question that um, was sort of putting it upon me to be in charge of changing your state of consciousness and okay. your level of happiness. And the first thing I always tell my clients is, is that I can't make anyone happy. Nobody can make anyone else happy. Mm -hmm. It really is an inside job. So what I do with my clients and what I might do with you if I was working with you is just really um, provide a workshop, so to speak. I do a workshop that could be done for a group. I do it one-on-one -on -one with my clients on Zoom mm -hmm. and I give them exercises to do. I go over the exercises. Most of the experience of the client is the homework from one week to the next. I just go over the homework, they do the homework, they, we review the homework, I give them more homework. So it really is their exercises and the chance for them to have insights. And then that's how they do the journey of happiness uh, from the inside out. That's a really good distinction. I want to share that. I think that what you're distinguishing is the difference between a therapist and a coach is kind of what I think you're pointing to is that it's ultimately always the responsibility of the student. But I guess what I was pointing to, if you're, if any coach is saying I'm a money coach or I'm a joy coach or life coach or whatever their thing is, they've got to be able to be able to say I'm responsible for understanding the navigation of, right? And it's up to the, it's up to the student who's ever paying that they're going to do the homework but there's still a some level of responsibility from perspective of you've done the work so you can then share the work do the work teach the work and then create the work for others i think is is the i believe is the journey of any really good coach right i totally agree with you i think i have been um helped out, so to speak, by my own journey. I think that does inform my work. I have had years of being bitter and jealous and miserable without even really noticing at the time if somebody had said to me when I was living in New York, oh, you seem so unhappy. People did say that occasionally to me. And I was like, no, I'm a happy person. I was not really aware of how miserable my life was. And now looking back, I see that they were right. I was unhappy back then. So my journey has been one of the things that has prepared me to be a happiness coach. Plus, I've done some research. I've had mentors such as Marcy Shymov, who wrote Happy for No Reason. Um, so now I really am at a place where I am happy for no reason a lot of the time. I wake up with joy and gratitude. So let, let, I want to talk about for just a second, and we're going to go into, you're going to share the three keys on fulfilling, was it fulfillment? Uh, yeah, uh, living life full out from within is the subtitle. Okay, got it. So we're going to talk about the, some three keys today of the seven that's in your book. And if you could just for a second share the, the website, people could go and check out your book. Sure. Anyone is welcome to go to sayyestolifebook.com. The title of the book is Say Yes to Life, and then the website has book added to it. Okay, so it's sayyestolifebook.com. Go check that out. Okay, so let's talk about one particular, before we go into the three keys, let's talk about one particular energy or feeling uh, that you've mentioned a couple times now, the word jealousy. So well, I, I'm just curious in your research or your experience or your personal experience, um, what do you feel that is from? Maybe your personal experience or just in general with clients. Where, yeah. What's jealousy from? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my own experience, um, looking back, I realized that I was really trapped in the monkey mind and I was really judging myself a whole lot and, and judging the whole world too. And that really does make happiness impossible when you're totally trapped in the monkey mind and in the judgments. Yeah. And so basically the, what I'm hoping my book will do for people who read it is I'm hoping it will uh, help them to make the journey from the mind into the heart. Mm. When mm. you're in the heart, that's where the undercurrent of joy that we were born with, mm. and it's always there until our dying day. Right. And um, we don't really notice that sometimes. I think I went for years in my life without really being aware of the fact that I had this joy and um, this uh, opportunity to say yes to joy, mm -hmm. uh, always there. And I just never really tapped into it. Right. Got it. No, that, thank you for sharing that. I, I believe I completely concur with that. Okay, let's talk about the three keys. So there's seven keys in your book. Say yes to lifebook.com. But let's talk about the three keys. What's one key? One of the keys in my book is um, say yes to your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And you know, I might have, it might also be pretty much the same as saying yes to who you are. Um, we're, of course, all souls and all hearts have, just like we have fingerprints, we have heart prints, we have soul prints, we're all totally unique in all the world. And um, just 
going away from judging anything that you have that's unique and just really um, standing in uh, a firm affirmation of I'm a glorious person and um, this is one of the unique things about me, one of the unique gifts I give the world. Really getting in touch with that and reminding yourself of that every day can help you get out of the mind and into the heart. Mm, yeah, completely. So how does one listening say, how do I get into the heart? Can you speak to that? Yeah, well, um, I, I think that some of the best ways are the seven keys that I have provided in the book. Okay. Um, you and I just, just go you can, show, you can just show where, like how does, so the concept, right? If someone's listening going, okay, how do I get into like, some people like really can't connect to that. I mean, I know people in my life, if I said connect to your heart, they look at me like I'm crazy. So I'm trying to like tap into that. How could you tell someone to do that? I mean, I understand that I, I can tap into that pretty fast, but there are really people that are so disconnected from their higher self. They're so disconnected from love and that piece of them. And, and maybe this is not the book for them, or maybe it is, I don't know, but what would you say to them? Um, maybe it would be a gradual journey. I think I have been uh, gradually becoming more and more in my heart and um, being more aware of the heart space within me, even physically, um, over the years. Uh, so I think that the baby steps, uh, the first baby steps along the way, um, might be the most important, the most powerful. Um, and I think that some of the baby steps might be um, just like, for example, saying yes to your uniqueness could be something that could just get you one inch closer to being in your heart. Mm -hmm. That's really true. Yes to my uniqueness. I just know people, I know for myself, it's taken me a long time to get into my heart and open it. And I think it's one of those things that I'm speaking for myself and people that I've had conversations with is that um, they, if you're walking around the world and you're like, are you in your heart? They're like, yeah. <laughs> or whatever like you know it's I mean, you lived in new york you know how it is like yeah i guess i am you know but most of us and our society pulls for us to live one outside of ourselves usually on social media or two in our head you know or in our bank accounts that has some direct correlation but yeah. it it's it's a rare moment in our today's society to walk into a work situation, even a relationship situation, and to drop in to the heart. I mean, you lived yeah. in New York. Come on, you know this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I live, live in Texas. At least with us, we're like, oh, bless your heart. You know, we have a little bit more. But, um, and I'm speaking just esoterically, of course. But I think that it is cultural. Um, did you grow up in a environment in your home with your parents or family? that it was very head space or heart space? Oh, actually my father has always been a professor. So um, I had a cerebral role model there. Um, the thing is, is that I really appreciate what you're saying that you really did hit it on the nail. You got a bullseye there. And um, so the culture does make it difficult. And you've talked about a lot of distractions. Like we go into our bank account, we live in our worries and so on and so forth. So. Yes, I'm writing this book for people who are sort of trapped in their minds and hoping that they'll be able to get some benefit from it. Yeah. Um, and uh, the thing is about um, being trapped in the mind. Oh, gosh, I, I just drew a blank. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up for you. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll talk. Um, you know, when we're, because here, I'll talk a little bit about it, and you're welcome to step at any time. But we are really in our society where we watch news, right? Or we watch YouTube, YouTube, or we are watching social media. We're always watching other people. And in my experience, I have noticed that just get logging on to Instagram or Facebook is feeling a feeling of judgment, of jealousy, of anger comes up pretty fast for me. I mean, I could be flipping through and within one minute of me flipping through other people's pictures, I will have jealousy. I will have heartache. I will have um, maybe a laugh. I will have all these feelings come up in one minute. And it's because my body's responding to the images or the pictures or the quotes or whatever. And sometimes it's jealousy. Sometimes it's anger. Sometimes it's, oh my God, I wish I had that. I don't have that. Uh, you know, and I, if we look at our society, 
we're more and more and more and more and more. It's not going away, you know, TikTok yeah. and Snapchat yeah. and Instagram. Yeah. So how, okay. you know, my two questions fold. How do we, how do you help someone really tap into that? And also what's the advantage? What's the advantage yeah. for someone to say, I want to get your book and learn this process? Okay. How do I help people tap into that? Um, actually, um, I want to change that question to, see, what I, I trust that the heart shows up and is always there in the background or whatever. The problem that we're dealing with is that so many people are making the mind the leader. And so the mind is, uh, and then the heart is playing second fiddle. And if we just put the mind at the caboose of the train, and the mind has a lot to give us. And I don't wanna say anything bad about the mind or the, the judgmental chatterbox or whatever. I don't want to fight it. I don't want to say you're bad. I just want it to be embraced with love and to be along for the journey, but in the caboose. I don't want it to be the center stage thing that is always referenced and you know the, the, that the heart orbits around. For me, having the heart at the center and having the mind do some orbiting or whatever is really um, the way to go if you want to be living a happy life. And that also opens the door to being happy for no reason without condition. When you have the conditions, when you're tying your happiness to um, outer things going the way you want them to, that is something that the mind is more interested in. The mind okay. uh, wants the judgments they have to um, to give bloom or whatever. But anyway, they want it to go a certain way. The mind really wants a certain way, and the heart is more willing to be non-resistant. Mm, so, what do you think? What do you see with your clients or in your own life? that has been results of someone tapping into their, their heart space? Um, well, for me, I feel like um, there's a lot more freedom. Um, freedom, I'm not, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not, see, the, one of the things that happens on this journey and one of the, the keys to um, happiness is just letting go of all of the self images that you've had in the past. Uh, and so um, the self images are sort of dealing with the mind and the heart is the place where, and, you know, the way I frame things, the place where um, you're embraced as you are and uh, just the way you are, there's no need for you to change. Okay. Got it. So it's like, freedom when you tap into your heart your the experience of the person is freedom is that would that is that right right and one of the things that um really makes it an expansive free experience that gets you out of jail is um being free from the self images that you've been carrying around uh like i'm not good enough and so on and so forth and perhaps in a minute or two i could if you'd like i can share a story or something yeah like go for it go for, yeah Feel yeah, free. That'll, as opposed to being theoretical, yeah, this will give it a concrete it. experience. It's a short story. So um, right before we were going to be getting our, having our little get together, um, I decided, you know what, I need to, I just had an intuition. I, sh I wanted to go out to the cafe down the block, get a little snack, a little cup of tea, bring it back and have the, the, the words that came to me in my intuition were have a little sacred meal. Now that's a phrase I never use. So I don't know where that intuition came from. I've heard religious people when I hang out with them occasionally use that phrase. So it's in my lexicon. I never think in terms of sacred meal and I never think in terms of ceremonies. So this was really, uh, but I was like, wow, that sounds really nice. I think that'll get me in a good space, you know, uh, and then we can have our little gathering. And um, so I, I went to the place and as soon as I walked into the cafe, I saw a really good looking guy and immediately, quicker than any words could come up, immediately I just snapped into an old pattern of mine that I thought I had gotten over. I immediately compared myself to him and he was the one who was um, good enough for a romantic relationship, not me. He was the one who was good enough for all sorts of things across the board, like lots of money and a good job and stuff. And I caught myself. A few years ago, that would have been the end of the experience. I would have just left it at that, period, end of story, next. But in this case, I was fully aware of what was going on. 
And I'm hoping that that will indeed fall away and fade away within the next few days. Uh, that old uh, pattern is so deeply ingrained in me. Uh, so then I came back and now this is really where the story gets nice. Um, there I was having a little um, bite to eat and some tea and I decided I wanted to, all of a sudden out of the blue I decided to bless it. I never bless my food and stuff. So I blessed the snack and then all of a sudden I was guided to um, bless my body and to bless my body's knowledge that I am good enough. So I was blessing my body saying thank you body for knowing I'm good enough. Bless that knowing. And then I was told to um, bless my heart for knowing I'm good enough. So I sent energy to my heart. I was saying, bless you heart for knowing I'm good enough. And um, then I was asked to bless my mind, um, to, to ask my mind to know I'm good enough, as opposed to saying it does. So I asked my mind, please know I'm good enough. And that was the end of the experience. I'm going to be doing that every day. And I'm so grateful for that gift. And I yeah. encourage everyone else to do it if they want to. No, that, I love that. I mean, I just want to kind of maybe restate it. And thank you for sharing that beautiful story. And I love that you are following intuition. That is beautiful. I love how the intuition just you followed it, it followed you into, you know, uh, blessing the food and then blessing your body and then blessing your knowledge. Like how beautiful was that flow? That was just a beautiful thing. And I, I think that is a testament to the kind of work that you've done on yourself. I think when we start doing work on ourselves, it's then we want to actually uh, give it to others. And then we want to share our experiences. So there's someone that heard that today and said, wow, I could, I could do that at lunch today. I could, I should do that. You know, like, why not? Yeah. Like, why not do that today and see if it makes a difference for, for me. And it's the little things. And, you know, I got my surgery, like I said, it's been nine days. Um, so Greg, right now the bottom of my body is all jacked up, but I have been, I have been, <clears throat> you know, blessing every piece of it. I blessed the doctor before he walked in. I'm blessing that the fact that I live in the United States and I have this amazing doctor that's incredible, you know, blessing that where I was at, blessing I had someone take me, blessing, like blessing every little piece of it, you know, the little, like what I call particles, right? And I think that that's part of the journey is just seeing, thank you for the, you know, thank you for the, I had a really amazing nurse. The guy was great. I'm like, thank you for this really funny nurse that's making me laugh right now. You know, thank you that we have anesthesia. That I'm not feeling anything while he's cutting in me. That rocks. You know, like it just the little things and blessing every piece, blessing my body that it's so healthy that we have we're having no issues with any kind of any any problems with it. It's just taking time to heal because the body takes time to heal. So I think as just something as small as blessing the snack and blessing your tea and then blessing your body and blessing the knowledge. And then, you know, and then you're here showing up in the space that you're in, you're blessing everyone who's hearing that story. I think that's part of the process. And I, I really loved that you shared the story, part of that story about like you see a person and you start feeling the feelings you felt. I think we all do. I know I do. I still, when I go somewhere, I'm like, Oh my God, da, da, da. like it just is there you know, but you had this opportunity to shift it. And I think that's what's a testament to your work, you know, and, and to our, all our work, you know what I mean? I Thank you. Cool. Thank you. I, I have a funny feeling that we are in a new era now and that a lot of people are going to be having experiences just like the one I just shared. Uh, a lot of people are going to be catching themselves and a lot of people are going to be doing the work. Yeah, I think so too. And, um, I'm going to share a quick little story if you don't mind. And, and, and I'm sharing it and, and no one's gonna know what I'm talking about and that's okay, but I, I just wanna share this one piece. There's a friend of mine in Austin who has reached out to me just because she's been in total freak out for the last, I guess, 10 days. And a friend of hers like disappeared. It was a, general, a guy in his 20s. And I guess he showed up back in like after 10 days and he posted a video on Facebook. And so she's like, go look at it. And I don't know this person from Adam, just to be clear, I do not know her that well and I don't know the story. So I just watched this guy's like three minute video and I don't really know him to save my life. So I can't speak for anything he's going through. But I can say, you know, that 
I felt like I wanted to say, I didn't text him. I just want to say, yeah, you are moving through the energy and new era that we're all going through. You know, I'm definitely going through a massive shift in my life. I mean, massive. And almost everyone I've touched recently is like, let me tell you about this massive crazy things that are going on. You know, like there's a shift happening, I think, on the planet overall. And everyone's having their own experience of what that looks like. But if I had to put it in a term, I think it's, you know, cutting shit out of our lives. <laughs> and that shit could be all kinds of things. You know, I my love surgery, it. Right. I my surgery it. was basically cut. They had to open my leg and t- cut out melanoma. All right. You talk about a representation of cutting shit out of your life. Right. I was like, well, I guess that's gone, you know, but, and I, at the same time, I cleaned out two of my closets. Like it's still a representation. One was surgery and one was just going to the goodwill but i think it's a representation you having that one story with your thoughts and you shifting that's still representation of cutting shit out of your life you know and i i feel that everyone right now is going through that in their own experience but i think it's a it's a plant i think it's a universal shift right now that's my personal view i love it I love it. And I, it's very congruent with my view. Um, so we do have some common ground here. Um, and also, I love how you're phrasing it. Just It's all about getting rid of negative. Earlier, I think I sort of started to say something and I didn't really get to the punchline. I really feel like the work that uh, the main part of um, becoming happier is just um, overcoming the obstacles, dissolving the negative tendencies. And what's left is what is natural and organic within us, which is the heart and not the judgmental mind. Uh, you know, the judgmental mind can come along and stuff, but the heart is really what we were born with, the love and the joy. And I really feel like once all of that stuff get, just falls away to the wayside, what's left is the glory and the happiness and the majesty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I love it. That's absolutely right. I think we're we're you're com- we're completely in alignment. So, um, okay, so um, time is running short, but I just wanted to come back to your book. Um, where did you, when did you have the realization you wanted to uh, start this book? Has it been years? Has it been just like last couple of years? What what was that? Yeah, well, it all started with some seeds. With I've just sort of started writing sentences like, the time has come for us to be honest about who we are, about the glory that we are. The time has come for us to be honest about what's possible with God's help. And then out of those sentences, I just kept writing more and more. And um, so it sort of just, I didn't really have an outline at the start. That's how I write. I, it, uh, about a year and a half ago, it sort of started. And um, now it's published. Yeah, it's published. Yay. Okay, great. Well, are you excited? Is this your first book? It's my first um, book, yes. Yay, that's cool. That's awesome. So uh, what's the website again? Yeah, people can find out more about the book if they go to Say yes to life book.com. Say Say yes to life book.com. All right, any last words you want to share with our listeners? Happiness for no reason is a real possibility. You know, we can have happiness when we get our promotion and celebrate that evening, and that's wonderful. And we can also have happiness when life isn't going our way. When, um, of course, we're going to feel the bad feelings and the sadness and stuff when things go wrong and and we um, get fired from our job. We'll feel the frustration and the anger. And at the same time, it's also possible to experience the feelings and also know a sense of happiness and stability in your life. Mm, mm, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elliot, for coming on. Elliot Robertson, say yes to lifebook.com. Go check that out right now. Elliot, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the work that you've done and sharing your personal stories with us. And again, that's say yes to life.com. My name is Heather Havenwood. Check me out at heatherhavenwood.com on Roku, Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much. Bye.